Good morning and warm welcome to all my dear students. Today, uh, the session for today would be levels of strategy as we have already discussed in the previous video. Uh, we have discussed about what strategy is, what are plans, uh, the features of strategic decisions. This is a part of our unit one and when we finish the session today, we would be completing our unit one. Uh, strategic management uh, in and entrepreneurial development. This is for travel and tourism management semester 5. So today we start off with levels of strategy. Yesterday we discussed what strategy is all about. Now today we are going to uh, discuss and dig deep into the levels of strategy there is. So there are three levels of strategy uh, basically. We have the corporate strategy, we have a business strategy and then we have operational methods. So let us all look into what corporate strategy, strategy is all about. Right? So corporate strategy defines what business uh, our organization or enterprise should be in. So, so like we discussed yesterday, strategy is a, is a, is a top level management uh, activity. It's a, it's a top level management uh, decision. Uh, that is that that comes into play uh, so in the corporate strategy what business uh, the company should be in so this question is answered uh, in the corporate strategy level next we have is business strategy so in the business strategy we are trying to you know the company is trying to know that we know after the corporate after the corporate strategy is, uh, is, uh, is is established so now we know what business we should be in what business we are going to venture into now we have business strategy which will help us to you know tackle and beat the competi competition that is there in the market as, as we are already aware there is uh, the market uh, there, there is no perfect competition in the you know uh, in the, in the, in, the, in the real market uh, but uh, the, the, there is a competition in the real market. So uh, the business strategy, in the business strategy, what we try to do is we try to, the, the company tries to build in tactics to beat the competition. Next we have uh, is, the, is the operational methods to implement the tactics, yeah. The, the, third, level, the, the third level strategy we have is, are the operational methods. Yeah? How are we going to operate and how are we going to implement the business strategy? So there are these are the three levels of strategy as you can see in the diagram let me uh, let us understand um, uh, deeper more deeper and look at what corporate strategy is all about so corporate strategy as as you can see in the board um, the point bullet point one it says look at the whole range of entrepreneurial opportunities what business you should be in so in a corporate in a corporate strategy we are trying to understand what are the opportunities that are there in the market yeah uh, what businesses should we venture in so this so this decision is a top level decision yeah top level management these are the people board of directors and and, and top level managers who are taking these decisions as to which business should we uh, be venturing into so uh, let's let's take for example um, Tata 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 Group of Industries. Yeah. So Tata Group of Industries not only do they have uh, the businesses in uh, in in motor vehicles, uh, they have the businesses across IT sectors. Yeah. Uh, they have the businesses across uh, FMCG fast moving consumer goods. So they have ventured into different industries. Yeah. So this decision that the Tata group of industries have taken is a corporate uh, is, is, is a corporate strategy which is taken by their top level management. Next we have is creating value through uh, diversified portfolio which are compatible. Yeah. When we talk, the important word here is diversified portfolio which are compatible. So uh, I, I think we, you would also come to uh, uh, understand this uh, more uh, clearly once you you would be doing classes for security analysis and portfolio management so creating value through diversified portfolio means you know you you not keeping all your eggs in the same basket yeah 
So, so when, when, when there are investment in different ventures, when there are dif investment in different um, portfolios, yeah, um, in terms of financial management, let's say we invest uh, in, in terms of financial management, investments in debt and equity. Yeah. As we already know, as we know that equity uh, bears uh, high risk and high return. Debt bears low risk and will give you low return. So, so the in in terms of those things, diversified portfolio uh, it helps to create value which are compatible to each other. Meaning, let's say a, a portfolio is is not doing well, the other other portfolio can support and you know uh, and help the business stabilize. Next one we have is this level answers the foundational question of what you want to achieve. It is its growth, stability, or retrenchment. Even in in the in the corporate strategy, while the corporate strategy is being formed, uh, in this level, the the top level management tries to decide: Do we want to grow right now, or do we want to you know stabilize our business or retrenchment? Especially, let's say in today's market condition, where where you know uh, the businesses are hit hard because of this. Uh, of this current situation of of this pandemic now the top level management ha they have a they have a tough decision whether they choose uh, to grow yeah so growth would involve investments uh, it would it would involve you know recruitment of people uh, you know resources many things stability is uh, let's say if if you if you want to keep do whatever we are doing right now excuse me and and or retrenchment yeah retrenchment as we already know you know there are, there are various uh, because of the losses that are being borne you know the company is uh, you know compelled uh, to lay off people compelled to you know um, compelled to uh, compelled to you know sub down uh, most of its work uh, so these are the level these these are the questions that are answered at the corporate level strategy now we have the business strategy okay so once we have let's say uh, the question that is answered is what business should we be in? now once we have understood uh, or the top level management figures out okay we should be uh, in so and so business now the business strategy now once we have the corporate strategy now the business strategy will uh, help us and help us to you know to understand and how and build plans how we can beat the competition yeah as in the bullet point we can see your battle plans what are the plans that will help you outdo the competitors that are there in the market uh, competitive and differentiation strategies and tactics used to fight and stand out from the competition in the industry that your company currently participates yeah so we are here we are talking about competitive and differentiation strategy yeah so, the, uh, so there are various strategies yeah uh, by which a business can stand out yeah let's take for example in terms of uh, let's say in, in terms of the motor vehicles uh, in our com in, in our country one of the most successful uh, company that we have is uh, is uh, Maruti Suzuki all right so how does it beat the competition when the, when there is such a fierce competition in this industry uh, they differentiate themselves from the other competitors in the in the in the industry by way of the service centers they have yeah so whenever I'm going to buy any vehicle uh, limited to a budget I would I would want to I, I would I would uh, uh, I would want to I would want to see the number of service stations they have the availability of parts and all so this is this is one of the uh, this is one of the business strategy Maruti Suzuki uh, uses to differentiate their offers to differentiate their service their, their product from the rest in the market the next one we have the last one we have in fact is our market level strategy so this strategy level focuses on how you are going to grow all right will it be through market penetration uh, market development product or service development or diversification so these are the, these are the four questions that would be answered while the market strategy is formulated this strategy level focuses focuses on how you are going to grow 
Yeah? So growth can be achieved uh, uh, in numerous ways, like we can see by market penetration. Yeah? So we try to uh, we try to go into go into the details and you know try to reach out to the people. Next, we have market development by ways of various methods, uh, product or service that we offer to the public by developing our product or service or by diversification of our product. So these are the three levels of strategy. We have the corporate strategy, yeah, which tells us what business we should be in. We have the business strategy, which, tells, which, which, which will tell us how we are going to be competitive in the market, how are we going to be differentiated in the market to the other competitors. And we have the market strategy, which will tell us how we are going to grow in the market. This is an example of PepsiCo. As we already know, uh, it is one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, one of the one of the biggest companies in the world. Okay, so the PepsiCo. Let, let's let's see what what the corp. We, what I have brought in here is uh, the the point one tells us about the corporate strategy of PepsiCo. The point two tells us about the business strategy, and the point three tells us about the market strategy. So the corporate strategy of PepsiCo is to diversify the company's portfolio into all kinds of ca categories. So their so their so their uh, corporate strategy is to diversify their product portfolio. So they do not just want to be remembered as uh, they do not they just do not want to project to the people as as a as a, as a company which uh, you know uh, offers soft drink products. To the public, but they also want to, you know, uh, venture into various categories like snacks, food, and beverage industries. They are doing this through product innovation and close relationship with distribution allies. allies sorry. So, corporate strategy of PepsiCo is, uh, uh, you know, uh, is to diversify its company's portfolio. One homework for you guys is you need to you need to you know find out uh, the the various product uh, PepsiCo is offering to people in India. That is your homework, uh, and and understand this thing even clearly. The second point we have is the uh, PepsiCo uses cost leadership as its primary competitive strategy yeah so being a cost leader will help uh, help the pepsico you know to to you know to differentiate itself from the from the other uh, other market players to, to be competitive in the market pepsico tries to you know uh, be a cost leader cost leader in the market yeah meaning that they, they try to minimize their minimize their cost and offer the offer their products at a at a, at a, at a lower price than the competitors and they uh, their aim uh, you know uh, is to reduce the cost of the product and you know this is the business strategy the, the business strategy is to be a cost leader in the market the last one we have is is functional marketing level so to increase PepsiCo's profit, employees responsible for different products or product categories such as beverages or foods might focus on developing healthier products and making their packaging more environment friendly. Yeah. So, so what do they do for the marketing for the marketing strategy? Is they try to develop uh, they try to develop products that are healthy. And they try to, you know, make the packaging more environment friendly so that the company captures more market share. Yeah. So the market strategy is all about, uh, you know, cap how we are going to, you know, capture more market share. So they try to capture the market share by, you know, uh, by by providing beverages uh, which are healthier uh, and making packaging which are more environment friendly so that the company captures more market share so this is an example of a company which has as you can as you can see in the board which has the corporate strategy the business strategy and the marketing strategy you know uh, to reach their ultimate objective with this topic we would be completing the unit one of our syllabus so uh, this is the benefits of strategic management in tourism so we have discussed about uh, what strategy is uh, and what are the levels of strategy uh, what are the features of strategic decisions now we now we come to the point how strategic management benefits 
the tourism management how how through strategic management uh, tourism industry or tourism management is benefited so the first point we have is allows firm to anticipate changing conditions as we already know strategy is made uh, and it involves risk because of uncertain future so what it does is once once the the top level managers top level management they are they're framing their strategy what it does is it helps it forces or it encourages the top level management to sit down think and understand and proactively take measures to anticipate you know changing conditions uh, ch to, to anticipate changes which might come be it because of uh, demographic change be it because of technological change so what it does it 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 encourages or it forces the top level management to anticipate changes that can come in the near future unless the unless the company is able to cope up with the changes uh, the company becomes redundant so so strategic management since it is a future oriented um, uh, strategy is a future oriented uh, activity what it does is it allows the firms to anticipate changes to anticipate changes that might come in the future and prepare themselves and make themselves ready to face whatever is coming in the future next we have is provides clear objectives and direction to employers and employees so strategic uh, so like we discussed yesterday in the class strategy is a is a top level management think it comes from the top level management thinking hat and it outlines or it clearly defines what is expected from the employers as well as the employees so everyone is clear about their roles and uh, you know like we discussed yesterday uh, to you know to 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 execute the strategy there are various plans where various roles and responsibilities are assigned to to employees to various job roles so in this way it provides clear objectives people are aware of what they need to do what they need to do or or what they what 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 is that what is expected out of them what are the timelines to be made so it provides clear objectives and direction for employers and employees strategic management minimizes resistance to change like like we already know one of the uh, you know one of the obstacles that we face uh, is resistance to change be it in uh, you know be it in terms of uh, employees or be it in terms of people who are at the top level so unless we unless we are you know willing to change uh, ourselves unless we are willing to you know upgrade whatever we have learned so far we we or the company becomes redundant in in the near future so st with, because strategic management is future oriented so so the so the uh, so the framework is is outlined keeping in view of what might come ahead so there would be changes so there would be changes which would need to be incorporated there would be skills that needs to be updated there would be you know uh, uh, you know you know there, there would be many things which needs to be changed or which needs to be developed uh, as an employee so the strategic man management minimizes resistance to change because it encourages changes it lays down an outline where people need to change uh, you know you know people need to change themselves people need to update their skills you know go through trainings go through you know um, fresh training so that they can update themselves and you know when the change arrives they are ready ready to accept the change and you know go with the flow helpful to identify business opportunities like we already like we discussed in the corporate strategy what business we should be in so corporate strategy answers the question what business should a company venture in so what it does is in order to understand what businesses a company should venture in uh, the top level management would be looking at opportunities uh, where where uh, the company can you know invest time money uh, infrastructure and you know and generate profit in the long run so what it does is it helps us understand what opportunities are there in the market so in terms of tourism management it also helps uh, you know the manager top level managers or the business to understand what are the business opportunity that is there in uh, that is there in the market 
Next, the last one we have is enriches the practice of management. All right. So management, as we already know, you know, um, is an is an art of getting things done by the other, as Mary Parker Foley has uh, defined. Is art of getting things done by the other. Management is future oriented. It is not about uh, it is it is not just about getting things uh, done right now, but also about understanding what lies lies ahead in future. So what it does is. It the people in the top level management, people who are responsible for you know leading the leading the line for the organization, also they get the opportunity, or they get the chance of bringing in their ideas, bringing in the, bringing in their understanding, bringing in their expertise into one place, and you know and and you know and practice whatever they have learned, practice um and practice and put into exercise the expertise they have in their fields and lead the organization uh, to greater heights and ultimately through all this uh, uh, through all this uh, the benefit to the organization would be it would be meeting the uh, organizational objectives so these are the benefits of strategic management in uh, strategic management in tourism management uh, it allows firms to anticipate change, provides clear objectives, it minimizes resistance to change, it helps to identify business opportunities, and lastly, it also enriches the practice of management. So with this topic, we would be completing our unit one. Uh, have a nice day. We would be soon uh, starting our unit two as well. Thank you very much.